All right, guys, today we're talking about a game called Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Now, ever since this game has been announced a long time ago, I've been really, really looking forward to it because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, of course, and this encompasses all nine movies. And the more they showed about it of all the open worlds, the fact that you can travel to any planet you want and explore it and see what's going on over there, all these side missions and recreating the whole entire movie in Lego fashion with the Lego humor. I was all about it and couldn't be more excited. However, the Steam Deck came along, which I've been doing videos on, and I was really disappointed to see that the game was marked as unsupported by Steam uh, a month ago. And it's still technically marked as unsupported, but lo and behold, the game does work if you actually switch it to GE Proton. Uh, it technically works with what's built into Steam already, so I'm surprised it's even marked as unsupported, but the frame dips a lot and it doesn't run as well. But I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get this game to run really well on the Steam Deck by switching it to the GE Proton version and how to get that installed. And then I'll show you a little bit of gameplay so you guys can see how it runs and talk about what you guys can expect performance wise, even at max settings in this game on the Steam Deck. Uh, so which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and dive into the video. Look at this. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech, going for a brekkie is the gaming tech, gaming tech is the gaming tech, gaming techie. Alright guys, so here we are with today's video doing Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Now, I've been really excited for this game because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, being able to play through the entire trilogy, uh, movies 1 through 9 in this game, and how good the game looked, uh, especially the last few weeks, had me really excited. Uh, when you look at the game on Steam Deck, you can see here, according to the game info, and this has been on there for a while, it did say unsupported, so I was really worry because this is one of the games that i wish i could play on the go sometimes it, it, it's a game built for that there's a lot of side missions a lot of things to do in the game and it's great to be able to hop from pc when i'm home and then playing this on the go so even though it says it's unsupported we do have the game working so theoretically you can play this game without actually with, with just switching this to proton experimental or even switching it to uh just running it regularly but the frame rate is not going to be great and uh, it's gonna be hitching down to like the 20s and stuff. It's not gonna perform well, basically. So we can get the game to actually run a lot better by installing a different version of Proton, which is exactly what we're gonna be showing you here today, on, uh, which is called GE. Really simple to install, we'll walk through that right now. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna go uh, click on the Steam button, then go into power, go ahead and switch to desktop here for a minute. Now, of course, I've already done this install, but I'll walk you through exactly what I did. Really, really simple. So the first thing you're going to want to do here, uh, once you're going to desktop one, is click on this little blue shopping cart, which brings up the Discover Store. And then you're going to go ahead and just hit the search button there. You're going to go ahead and hit the Steam and the X button. So it brings up the keyboard here. And you're just going to go ahead and type in Proton. Just like that. Hit the keyboard so it goes away. And you can see one of the things that's going to come up there is Proton Up dash Q2. Uh, so you're just going to go ahead and hit the install button. Of course, mine hit says remove right now. It will say install like the rest of these do. Just install that. And once it's installed, you just go ahead and tap on it and you see the little launch on the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit launch. You will see that this little window here on the bottom right is going, or sorry, bottom left is going to open here. Now yours is not going to say GE Proton 7.14 because that's obviously because I already installed it. Yours will show nothing. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit add version. That shows up right there. You're gonna go ahead and select the version here. Uh, if you hit the drop down, it will already be the latest one, but all the different versions are there for GE Proton. Of course, leave it selected on the latest one, 7-14. And then you just hit install, you wait a couple of minutes there, and you'll see it then be installed, and you'll see it listed here, GE Proton 7-14. Now, in order for Steam to actually refresh itself, uh, once you had this installed, just go ahead and right click the Steam icon on the bottom and hit exit. So Steam closes out, and then you can close out of this once you see GE Proton 7-14 there. Close out of this, close out of that. Go ahead and hit return to game mode again. So it will relaunch out of desktop mode back into the regular mode here, into Steam OS. And then you go ahead and click on the game here, and you go to settings on the right-hand side. You go to properties. You go to compatibility, you are going to turn this on because yours will be off like this. Just go ahead and hit the check mark and you'll see on the list you'll have a new version of Proton. You can see all the ones that usually Steam has and we have Proton Experimental that I've installed for other stuff uh, on my videos. But for this case and for this game we're using GE Proton. So you can see that's the one we just have there. We have it selected and now we are ready to launch the game. So we're going to go ahead and hit play here. 
All right, so here we are at the beginning intro of the game. As you guys are seeing here, we are at the main menu here, fully loaded. I love how they have all the characters here on the main menu. Uh, fantastic how that looks. All right, so if we go into the options, we're, we can see I have everything set to high here. You can see I have uh, this set to high, temporal, ultra high, ultra high for reflections and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you'll see how the frames per second run when you get into the open area. The first part of this game where you go through the intro kind of ran at like 50 to 60 FPS. But as soon as you get into the open world, you'll see how it runs here in a minute. It will, it will definitely dip down to the to the 30s and sometimes 25 FPS. So, But that's with everything running at max. Of course, you can mess with the settings and turn down some of those space reflections and we'll get it running pretty solidly over 30 FPS. But let's just show you guys how that works. So you can see here, this is where I left off. You can see the, the frames right now are at 30, 37, uh, sometimes dipping down when you scroll over. So this is, again, when you're in an, op when you're in an open world like this, uh, you can see the frames are kind of a little bit all over the place. They seem to now be settling down after we load it in. But again, uh, you can definitely either lock this to 30 frames per second, of course, and it will be a better experience, or you can just lower some of these reflections. But I'm leaving everything on high for you guys for a couple of minutes here so you can see how it runs, and then we'll lower some of the settings down. Uh, but everything is currently maxed out, and it looks fantastic, uh, obviously, with everything maxed out. So let's go ahead and continue a little bit. So you can see now that we're in a tighter area here uh, where it's not like an open world, you can see that the, the frames are now reaching the 60 that I was talking about, 50 to 60. So you can see. It depends on the areas that you're in. But when you're in a giant open area, you're going to have to lower the, the either lock it to 30 and uh, lower some of the space reflections down a little bit um, when you're in an open world kind of environment. When you're doing these story missions, it seems to hold a steady 50 to 60 with everything maxed out, which is... Really cool to see, to be honest, because it runs really well when it's when it's doing that. But like I said, open world, you're going to have to uh, mess with the settings a little bit once you get there. But this looks really good, and it's performing really well. So this is kind of an open world environment again. Once you get into here, you can see it's obviously a world that you can explore. There's a bunch of icons on the map here. So you can kind of do side missions if you want to uh, continue going. That's why the frames are dipping now because this is, again, now you're not in like that central story mission area uh, where you're going through levels. This is now the open hub. Uh, so things get a little bit more, um, you know, hard to run when you're in, a, uh, in an open world like this where you're kind of just scrolling through. But like I said... If you come into the settings of the game here and you were to lower a couple of the settings here, you can definitely make it run at at least 30 FPS solid at all times if you just lock it. So, you know, this is sitting at ultra high. This is sitting at that. You can do FXAA, which will help. But you can turn it off altogether. Um, you can change this to high and high and uh, set it just like that. And now you can see that it still looks really good as you guys are looking at here and now we're getting a higher frame rate of 60 
in this area. Now, this is obviously going to vary depending on what area you're in. There's a lot of, of environments in this game. Some areas are going to perform, some open world areas are going to have more going on than others. So the frame will go lower. So you might have to change things depending on what open world environment you're in. But generally, you'll be able to get 30 FPS uh, in here. The game is performing really, really well. Uh, especially for a game that's not even technically supported according to Steam with the GE Proton. It's working really well uh, with some slight dips every once in a while. Um, if you have everything maxed out, especially. I'm excited to keep exploring this. I'm so happy that this game actually works on the Steam Deck as you guys are looking at here. Um, fantastic, and I'm excited to keep exploring this. So, guys, check this game out. The game's getting great reviews, and I'm excited to keep exploring it, um, you know, as a huge Star Wars fan. And I'm glad I can play it on the PC when I'm home and play it on the Steam Deck on the go. And it looks fantastic on here. Other than that, guys, if you guys have any questions about what you guys saw in today's video, as always, leave it down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.